It's Maggie, and welcome to Maggie Reads. Today, we're reading Make Way for Ducklings, written and illustrated by Robert McCloskey. Ponies, Ketchup, and Paw Patrol? Sure, but I also love New York City and all things Broadway. Singing? Yep. Stage story? Maybe we've met. Then there's my dog Rachel and cats Bailey and Monica. But I love school, especially reading. And I'm here to read along with you. Welcome to Maggie Reads. I'm in my big new comfy chair. Let's start reading. Mr. and Mrs. Mowers were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mower saw a place, what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mower said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any farther. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard, so down they quacked. The next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the Mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast. Better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard, as they climbed out on the bank and loaded along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There were no foxes and turtles, and the people feed us nuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that had suited her. But... Squawked Mrs. Mallard. All but dither. You'll get run over! And when she got off breath, she added, This is no place for babies with all these horrid things rushing about. We have to look somewhere else. We bit. So they flew over Beacon Hill and around the state house, but there was no place there. They looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, clocked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice, quiet place, and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like the just the right place to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. Only just in time, now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers had started to drop out, and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. But of course, they would swim. And one day, they swam over to the park on the river bank. And there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts. And after that, the Bowers called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Howard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go visit Michael anymore because she had to set all the eggs to keep them warm. 
She moved up the nest only to get a drink of water, or to have her lunch, or to cut the eggs to make sure they were all there. One day, the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Knack, then Knack, and Uwak, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings that it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip off to see what the rest of the river was like. Further on, so he said, I'll meet you in a week in the public garden. He quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She told them she taught them how to walk and learn to call when they were called to and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said, One morning, come along children, follow me. Before you can wake an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Neck, Uwak, Pack, and Quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Bower led the way to the water as they swam behind her to the opposite bank. They, they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack! went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled along again. Went Jack, Cack, Knack, Knack, Uwak, Pack, and Quack, just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking. Mrs. and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. They made such a noise that Michael came running. Low waving his arms and blowing his whistle. He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, then beckoned with the other, the way the policeman do, for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side, on their way down to Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his policeman. He called Clancy at the headquarters and said, There's a family of ducks walking down the street. Now, Michael, send a police car, quick! Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Uwak, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, Isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the streets said, Well, now, isn't that nice? It must and Miss Mallard heard them. She was so proud she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was a policeman car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from the headquarters. The policeman held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street right into the public
garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he promised. The ducklings liked the new island as much as they lived there. All day long, they followed the swan boats and eat peanuts. In the night falls, they swim to their little island to go to sleep. Thanks for joining us when I read Make Way for Ducklings. Thanks for watching. Make sure you join us next time when I read A Sister More Like Me. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Bye! Hey, it's Maggie, and today, written and illustrated by Robert McCloskey. Let's <laughs> <laughs> oohack. Chickens. They're chickens. Like ready. <laughs> I'm in my blue big comfy chair.